Hello everyone, this is the Naples Money Managers News You Can Use. It is Monday, October the 12th. I am Marcus Bickle. This is Dennis Nelson and John Kincaid will be joining us shortly. I hope everyone is doing well today. So we are uh, nearly halfway through October, right, at this point. I don't know where it goes, but it goes, doesn't it? This is both the longest and shortest year on record. It, it, I, I, it's unexplainable. It really is. But, um, so what's, what's been happening? Well, we are coming up, as I'm sure everyone knows by this point, on an election. Yeah, I think so. November 3rd. Um, early voting has started in Florida, so if anyone wants to go to the polls, they can, and for those of us who haven't uh, mailed our, our ballots in. But um, yeah, we are in full swing. But what does that mean? Um, so Dennis and I were talking, and obviously, with a, um, a Democrat potentially winning the White House. Um, everyone's a little bit concerned about their, their taxes, capital gains, um, what's this gonna mean for my money? Um, so what we're seeing is with a lot of the more affluent out there, are they are putting their money into, into a trust so that it that will benefit their children. Now if um, a President Trump wins re-election, they will take that money out of the trust prior to it being locked up. If Biden wins the presidency, they pay the inheritance tax, which is probably going to be less than anything that would go on um, uh, if Biden were to win the presidency. So people are definitely beginning to look at what might be out there for, um, uh, you know, if we do see a change in the guard. Um, but uh, there are some strategies for the ultra ultra wealthy. For the ultra wealthy, and and we always assume that they would probably figure a way how to pay taxes. Absolutely, but what does that mean for for, for you and I? Well, um, you know, as as managers, we are beginning to look at that. You know, where are we potentially taking some profits um, uh, ahead of this? Um, maybe some doing some 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 tax evaluations. But uh, it might be a good time to look at those things. Talk to your talk to your CPA. Um, talk to your accountant. Things like that. And I will turn it over to Dennis Nelson. What you got for us, Dennis? Oh, well, uh, you may not have realized by now, but if you've really been listening, you do realize that I really love to talk sectors, sectors of the market. To me, that really kind of tells you what's going on, uh, not just in the market, but in the economy. Uh, last week uh, was a very good week in the market. Uh, Standard & Poor was up 3.5%, uh, maybe a little better. Um, the uh, but, but interesting, how that fell. Top, I bet you'd never guess what the top sector was. Energy. Oil stocks, natural gas stocks. Which for those who don't know, it has not been a good year for those stocks <laughs> at all. It has not been a good year uh, and maybe this is starting to show that uh, su supply uh, and demand are coming a little bit more in balance. Uh, that would be that would be good to see for the uh, for the energy field for sure. Absolutely. Um, Second, uh, uh, sec second highest uh, was uh, small cap stocks, and uh, a third uh, material stocks, uh, the material sector. Telling you a couple things, I think, that the economy is not only picking up, but booming. The, and, and you can see that. You go out on the, on the highway, see uh, there are trucks all over the place, going here, going there, going, Absolutely. <laughs> going to work, no doubt. The drive to work has has, has changed, <laughs> and, and, and uh, on a on maybe a disquieting note, though, um, small cap stocks usually kind of pretend maybe the end of the bull market. Uh, we saw that in 1999 when the small cap stocks, uh, those are a, a lot of those stocks have no earnings, um, uh, just uh, just just a business plan, a game plan. Uh, have been have been very strong here in the last uh, last since actually since the first of October. So you're saying the so, market might be a little speculative right now? Very very much speculative. We look at the, that when we're looking at options, we're seeing the premiums on the options uh, skyrocket. Yeah, they're very much expanding. So uh, there again, uh, it, uh, speculators tend to invest more in options than. Uh, um, than in the, the more expensive stocks. And more and more every year too, options are becoming very, very popular um, as a way to speculate. Yeah, they are, and, uh, and options are, are, there's a lot of good strategies with options, and of course, uh, John might talk about that here uh, right now, and I'll 
turn that over to John. Well, thank you, Dennis, and this is John Kincaid. All right, here you go. I love you. All right, well, it's good to be here. Um, a lot of my thought comes from the conversations that I have with people uh, that I come in contact with who have some interest in our portfolio. A lot of people want to know what we do, um, and they always want to know why are you different? What do you do that's different? And does that really turn into or transition to a strategy? And what is that strategy? And then finally, what do you really provide as far as results? Now, most investors in the retail sector, the Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, UBS, Wells Fargo, um, don't ask much about strategy because usually the advisor says, you gave us a million dollars, we're gonna chop it up into so many uh, different managers, we're gonna push that, that money out to those managers uh, because we like them, they've done okay. Uh, but strategy isn't the, the real topic of the discussion. Sure. Um, and so I try to lead with that once when I talk to people in the public. I try to talk about the strategy. Well, you even say that you know diversification isn't, isn't necessarily a strategy. Well, it's not. It's not. It's not. For instance, uh, I saw a portfolio that was a fellow who had spent a lot of time uh, in, in a healthcare company. Mm. And he had acquired a lot of the stock, the company stock. And then he had made some diversification through other stocks. But, uh, but he had a big concentration. But he did have a concentration and he did diversify, but that didn't give him the results he was looking for. There was no strategy, no true strategy. So the point today is, is I went back and I looked at the last 20 years of our enhanced dividend covered call writing portfolio. And for the last 20 years, I put all the down years up here, okay? I put the return of the Dow in those down years. And then I put our return in this covered call writing. So there can be strategy by diversification, but then that becomes real individual to the person that's advising. Sure. Because they may they may like energy mm -hmm. over technology because of X, Y, or Z. So the strategy really has to come down to quantified mechanics or something mathematical that drives or is... Uh, takes the emotion out. Takes the emotion out, perfect, and, and provides results because of the structure, mm -hmm. not because of the opinion. Sure, okay, sure, that's okay. important. So if we go back to 2001, I hope you all remember those years, I certainly do. The Dow was down 7.1%. We had just come off a mega decade of, of, of run with technology. Everybody owned AOL. <laughs> I owned the Munder Net, Net Fund, which is no longer around. But they were down seven. The, our portfolio was down 1.4%. So you can see this structure, this covered call writing structure, what it literally produces in quantified results. Mm -hmm. Not always because of stock selection. That's the important point. Oh, uh, you right. can you can pick a lot of stocks, but that's secondary in our in our strategy. Because we're able to quantify exactly. Quantify. So as we as we take the parameters in this strategy, we're able to plug in uh, numbers and say, okay, that that qualifies for the portfolio, or it does not, mm -hmm. regardless of the underlying common stock that we're buying. So 2002, the Dow's down almost 17. Uh, we're down uh, a little over 2%. 2005, the Dow again down a percent approximately. Uh, I wasn't here then, I'd like to know how we got a 10% return, but that's, uh, that's uh, part of our metrics here. And then of course, we all remember 2008, uh, the Dow was off 34, the, the S&P was down more, almost 40. And again, the structure and the strategy provides this at least a 50% downside protection uh, because of its characteristics. We move on to 15, the Dow was off 2.2, and we were about even. Uh, in 2018, a couple of years ago, the Dow's off five, we're down uh, four and some change. 
not quite as good as up here, but still provides the downside protection. And just to give you an update where we are in 2020, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has produced about a 17 basis point return. And the portfolio, the model portfolio, is up 6.47. And it's probably, some, has something to do, and I don't know, with uh, the premiums expanding. Absolutely. So down years, this strategy steps in because of structure and keeps uh, capital valuation secure. Well, thank you, John. So remember everyone, this is the Naples Money Managers with news you can use and money matters, but most importantly, you matter. Have a wonderful week.